Hi, I'm Jim Krantz, cow-calf field specialist at the Mitchell Regional Extension Center. Welcome to this iGrow podcast. Today we're going to talk about one of the ways that feedlot producers have of mitigating some of the stress caused by heat and the high humidity that we experienced last year and this year as well. Just for a little background, we're at the Bernard Donahue feedlot west of Howard in Minor County. And uh, this spring, Bernard came to me and he asked if there were ways that Extension could help him to uh, deal with some of the, the stress that they had experienced last summer. And so I got a hold of our SDSU Extension engineer, Steve Pohl, and we planned a trip to Nebraska with Bernard to look at some of the designs that they were utilizing down there uh, and have been successful with the designs for years. So we took a trip a couple months ago down there, and what you see here today are some of the eyes, a combination maybe, of some of the ideas we saw down there, and it's Steve and Bernard put together, and they're functioning quite well at this point. So um, they've, they've worked really well. There's a lot of temperature variation that uh, we didn't expect, maybe some extremes, uh, but at this point, for July 24th, and uh, I don't think Bernard's had any death loss up until now, and they're working extremely well. There are several things that feedlot producers can do to manage some of the heat stress that, that's involved. And Bernard, uh, the shades are one of them that we looked at very seriously and are working really well. But they also incorporated another concept that's working extremely well, uh, too. And that's the introduction of auxiliary water tanks. Uh, he, he just used his imagination and he put in fence line feed bunks uh, a couple years ago and he used to feed out of 20 foot steel bunks and he plugged the holes on the end of those tanks or those bunks and he's using them as water troughs now and uh, it's worked really well. They hold about 500 gallon. Um, we're estimating right now that those cattle in addition to the fountain that's, that's available to the cattle that they're consuming between 10 and 12 gallon of water each out of the, the tanks uh, that are just made up of old feed bunks. So that's working really well. He had previously, before he got the tarps up, been wet, wet in the ground down, both in the evening and then during the day. And since the tarps have been up, he's gone away from that practice and has just had virtually no problem. Hi, I'm Steve Pohl, uh, Extension Ag Engineer. I'm here to talk about the, uh, the shades that uh, Bernard Donahue has uh, put into his uh, feedlot. Uh, we started working on this last April. Uh, as uh, Mr. Jim Kranz talked about, we, we looked at uh, different options, and uh, one of the things with Bernard, I mean, we, we were looking for something that was simple to design, uh, yet very functional. So uh, Bernard came up with using cable and shade cloth, and, and one of the things that he wanted to keep in mind, we didn't want to have a whole lot of posts in the middle of the feed line. So we had talked about originally going end to end, feedlot with, but I said I said that would probably be too far to be able to stretch cable. So we added the center post, and as you can see, everything seems to be very well supported. Uh, he has three uh, cables coming across, and then he uses a 16-foot uh, wide shade cloth. And where he got the shade cloth, they were they put they welded basically the shade cloth together, and then we have three cables, of course, two one on each side, and then one down the middle uh, where we put the. Uh, put the uh, tarp to or the shade cloth to. Uh, uh, we decided that uh, we, we would end up, like, like I said, we using uh, 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 oil well pipe uh, to put them up. And, and one of the things that Burner came up with says, why don't we just take cable and just stretch it out and we can keep it tight. And uh, again, it gets back into the tighter that we can keep those cables. The, the, probably the less problems we're going to have with, say, wind damage, for example. So the other thing about having that center post, we didn't want to have a lot of posts in the middle in the feedlot because it gets in the way of equipment. And one of the keys with shade, again, uh, you know, in this case, uh, each lot has approximately 3,200 square feet of shade. So we're, we're uh, actually about 16 to 18 square foot per animal of shade. Uh, if maybe make one change, we'd probably like to see a little bit more square footage. But as you can see, uh, most of the cattle appear to be relatively comfortable underneath the shade, so we don't see that as, as a major issue uh, with, with the project. The other thing about shade, you want a minimum height is probably 14 foot. You also want to make sure, in this case we're about 15 foot high, because we want to make sure we had clearance with the, with the payloaders. And also for effective shade, you really want to be 15 to 16 foot high. 
Again, height-wise, you know, we, we like to see at least uh, 14 to 15, 16 feet high. And again, that allows for equipment to pass underneath, but also for, for airflow to move through relatively easily because you don't want to get it too low, otherwise you're going to restrict your airflow. And, and that's part of the, the uh, reducing the heat stress is to make sure that your animals, if you do have wind, that you're moving air through that through that area. Uh, Cost-wise, you can figure on spending between 16 to $20 per head. When you look at it, what really surprised me, I guess the first time we were out here, we were actually seeing about 30 degree temperatures on the ground between uh, what wasn't shaded and what was shaded. Uh, for the example, for today, we're showing, we're showing ground temperatures in the 144 range. Uh, again, orientation, these lots were, were well positioned where the feed bunks and everything were running north south and that's where we like to see our, our shades as well uh, run north and south that way you take advantage of the afternoon sun and as as the sun starts to move down in the, in the, uh, the, the shade actually moves and then you can also see the cattle moving with the shade so again we would prefer north south orientation with the shades on the sh on the shade project i guess we went through like every cattle producer did last year with the heat and it was towards about this time of the year, uh, last year, and we hauled water. And not that we lost a lot of a lot of cattle to the heat, but it's just the work and watching the cattle, what what they went through. Um, feed consumptions uh, pretty much went to zero or close to it, and, and that affects performance. And, and the end result, we're here to to produce beef, and so anything we can do um, here to improve efficiency or gain or just comfort of the cattle. Uh, this started and we made some changes and we'll make we'll continue to make changes on it but as you can see the cattle um, the comfort level um, and that's really what I was after is that not so much the the, the feed consumption or the efficiencies but um, how the cattle went off feed last year and came back on it was it was tough on them and uh, this year we're we're seeing decreases in consumption with 100 degree weather but not near uh, we still have cattle on the average probably eating uh, two-thirds to three-fourths uh, of what they were eating when the temperature was 70, 80 degrees. So um, that's a big thing to us because it's performance driven and um, we're, we're hoping we can improve that. You know, the water situation is, we did some things different here too. So that's really why we did it. Um, uh, cattle comfort is a huge thing and, and you get to learn more about that when you're watering cattle every day, you know, watching the cattle. So. These are designed um, square footage wise, I think about 15 to 8, 17, 18 square foot per animal. Um, different times of the day, they might all be one side or the other, but like right now you can see they've got the whole shade utilized. So I wouldn't have went any less, and I would say I'd watch that. Um, you think you can get by with one little shade, you, you could hurt yourself. 